Okay, so let's have a look at painting on faux leather. Now, the first thing I would say is that what I use is the Angelus um, le faux, uh, leather paints. They're acrylic leather paints. Um, I bought them initially to paint trainers, to paint leather shoes. Um, my daughter has a, a whole collection of, of trainers and some of them are looking a bit tatty, so I painted them. Um, and I bought the, the leather paints um, to be able to paint them. Now, if you're painting on leather, um, what you will need to do is use um, a leather preparation or deglazer um, substance on your leather to take away the surface finish because it doesn't leather is cured and and uh, prepared in such a way that the top coat is the, the top of the foil of the leather is um, completely um, impermeable pretty much um, so you if you're going to paint on leather um, certainly with trainers because they're designed to be waterproof um, I had to use deglazer um, on all the areas that I was going to paint and I would do the same if I were making um, a leather bag and painting on it um, Angelus do their own deglazer so you can buy it in other places as well now people have asked me if I finish um, if I put anything over the top and when I'm painting on vinyl I don't um, however when you're painting on uh, leather you would finish it you would add a, an acrylic a finish you can go, get a matte you can get a satin and you can get a glossy one i don't like the glossy one um and you just paint it over the top and it, go, it, it goes on sort of white looks a bit like um when you used to paint pva glue over things and it goes white and then it goes clear after it's dry and this is quite thin it doesn't what you have to wait until everything's dry before you put it on i've never used this on vinyl i've never needed to um but it's there if you want to paint on leather um now, in the previous part of the video, I talked about a pen, um, which this is designed for uh, leather paint. And effectively, you you take the little bung off, you pour your paint into the pen, you take the bung off, obviously, um, put the top back on, and it has a nib in the same way as a felt tip pen would. Um, it sucks up. You can. I've got new nibs as well. This one's uh, you. you by replacement nibs obviously because they get a bit gummed up I and mean, when you just put them in um, and you've got one end which has got a chiseled end so you can get a nice fine line the other end has a round end so you can get a more solid um, line for kind of coloring in now if you can't if you find you can't use a paintbrush these are pretty good actually um, I think they're quite wasteful of the paint and the paint's expensive so I bought one because I thought oh let's have a go with that and actually I'm better with a paintbrush than I am with a pen so this is a been as a sort of a leftover thing again it's made by the same company so it's designed to go with their product so um i'll pop that over there it's got a a ball bearing in there to keep the paint from uh, setting solid so if you've got they're like little plastic pellets if you've got um paint in there and you're doing something one day and then you want to come back to it the following day make sure you give it a really good shake because the paint gets a bit thick and gloopy that's my best advice for those things so Let's start by looking at the difference between light coloured vinyl and dark coloured vinyl. And shall we start with, let's start with this. This is a lovely colour. I love this sort of turquoise colour. Now the Angelus paints come in a full range of colours. Um, I mean, they're all sort of fairly basic you've got green blue turquoise orange pink black brown white you can get metallics i've got gold and i have a pewter one which actually comes out more silver than it does pewter um you can also buy fluorescent ones which i haven't got any of because i'm not really a fluorescent girl um and i think don't quote me on this that you can buy um a, a sort of glittery one there again haven't got them so don't know haven't tried them so give it a shake. These come with a brush um, attached a bit like your nail varnish jobbies. Um, and I guess if you wanted to do kind of just cover the vinyl, you could just use that. But I don't know what you'd do that for, because at the end of the day, if you want this color vinyl, you'd go and buy this color vinyl as opposed to using navy blue or anything else. But the colors do, the colors are, let's find a different paintbrush. That's not the one I want. The colors are, um, really nice and bright and if i just paint a little bit onto the navy i 
I don't know if you can actually see, I'm hoping you can, but it's quite a nice um, bright colour. But the best way to do this is to add several thin layers as opposed to one thick layer. If I do it on the uh, cream vinyl, it's a lot more, it's a lot bolder because it's just on a, on a lighter background. You can blend these, so let's grab a little bit of, let's do a, let's get a bit of this colour. So they blend really well. I'll just put paint on my table. Well done, Christine. Let's use that bit of paint. So. Again, you can get that sort of ombre effect. You can mix them in a palette um, to create other colours. Let's just... Now, unless you're very keen on, you can see there that that's sort of ombre it slightly and they do blend nicely. Um, and now unless you're somebody that can um, draw freehand and paint freehand, and I do sometimes, but it's not always successful. Let's get this off my table because I shall be swearing about it later. Let's find a bit of scrap fabric. I'm in a sewing room. Why can't I find scrap fabric? I emptied my bin yesterday, that's why. Uh, let's use my tea towel, that's what I need to use. Uh, let's just get that off of there because I don't really want it on the sewing table. Um, unless you're somebody that can paint freehand, and I can, and I do, um, I would always suggest marking out what you want to what you want to paint so i've just i literally drew a circle and i've kind of drawn in bits that i want to fill in um just to be able to show you and i've used one of those leather um marker pens the the silver pens and i'm just going to infill this and i'm using a tiny tiny paintbrush so that i can make sure that i'm staying within the lines that I've drawn. This is easier to get off. So if you go and make a mistake, you can take a cotton wool bud. So one of those, we call them fibblies in our house, the earbuds, um, and you can wet it and you can just scrape it where you've made a boo-boo. Um, But be confident. It's no good being sort of timid with it. You need to actually go for it. Um, if you want a less opaque look, you can water this down slightly because it is water-based. Your brushes can be cleaned in water. Just go slowly. And you can literally be as creative as you want to be or as creative as your artistic ability allows you to be. You will need a steady hand. So if anybody's got a bit of the shakes, that's not going to work. What I have tried doing is um, making stencils and adding a stencil onto a piece of faux leather and then taking an old toothbrush, loading it up with um, a bit of the paint, slightly watered down and then flicking it so that you get this kind of almost like um, a starscape look um, above the stencil. When you remove the stencil, that piece of step where you've had your stencil is clear of any paint and that's quite an effective look. Um, I did a panel with that that I was going to use on a bag and never did. And I don't think I've ever shown it on Facebook. I'll have to haul it out and see if I can find it. It's 
funny because this is really difficult to do while I'm talking. I, I usually have complete silence while I'm painting because I can get completely lost in it. I hadn't really thought about whether I'd be able to talk at the same time. And again, you can go over the silver lines if you want to. Um, or you can wait until it's dry and you can remove them. Um, these silver pens are designed to go onto uh, leather. They work just as well on faux leather. Um, the only thing I would say is don't leave them on for about three days and then try and get them off because they get more difficult to remove the longer they're on there. So once you've done one bit of painting, wait till it's dry and you can remove it. Um, when I bought my refills, they came with they came from China and they came with this, which is a pen that allegedly removes the silver pen. Um, it does, but it leaves an odd mark on the vinyl, a, a, a strange sheen on the vinyl. So do be careful if you get one of these because you may end up with marks that you don't want. Um, and then once they're there, you can't get rid of them. So let's keep going on my... I'm calling this a beach ball because I don't really know what else to call it. I just wanted to do something quick and easy so that I could show you. Um, now you could, and I hadn't even thought about this, you could actually, I've made stencils and used them, but I've never actually thought about making stencils to create the designs you could do. Um, and you could then perhaps, you could either make stencils or you could buy them, I guess. I mean, I've done stenciling as, as on walls before now, um, when it was very trendy to have stenciled stuff all over your lounge wall. Um, and I bought those from our local hardware store. So you can buy stencils, I'm sure. Um, and you could then perhaps use the silver marker to mark the design inside of the stencil before you paint it. She says, not really knowing if that's actually something you could do, but I'm sure somebody will try it. Um, just go slowly. Small brush marks. And I'm using a very small brush. This takes quite a long time to do. So it's not something that you perhaps want to do on bags that you're selling unless you have a customer base who are prepared to pay the bucks for it because this doesn't happen quickly um, and what they're effectively what somebody's effectively buying is a unique art piece so um, they should be charged accordingly unless it's your best mate or your mum and then you do it because you love them so I'm doing this all in one color at this point And as long as you're using decent paint brushes, you should get a decent finish. And I can't stress, it's a, it's a bit like using cheap needles in an expensive machine. You will not get a decent finish with a cheap needle. You need to use a good quality needle. Um, and the same applies to painting. So the best quality paints that you can afford and the best quality paint brushes that you can afford. So I've done three sort of rows and now I'm just gonna add a bit of an extra color just to give it a bit more dimension. And adding extra colors and stuff is something that it's about, it's, it's, it's something I can't teach you. Um, by blending and adding extra colors, you're gonna give the the look of whatever you're painting um, more dimension. It's about making something look more than one dimensional, uh, certainly for this sort of design anyway, which is just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite into this sort of optical illusion type designs at the moment, hence the um, some of the paintings that I've done recently, which you've seen. This paint isn't yet dry, so I can blend it slightly to give that 3D look to this. She says, hoping that it's going to end up as a sort of a 3D 
I was thinking about the rings around a planet when I was, I drew around the bottom of my mug. <laughs> so I literally drew around my mug um, and then filled in the, the lines across. It's really relaxing and therapeutic, or I find it really relaxing and therapeutic. I know not everybody would. Some of you would be very tense doing this because it's it's scary, but it isn't actually that scary. It's a piece of faux leather and a bit of paint, and you're not doing it on a finished bag, so it's not like you're gonna ruin the bag that you've been making for the last two days by painting on it. Um, I started painting on bags when my daughter was doing um, GCSEs and she was doing art and she was looking at doing 3D a 3D art installation and I said to her what about if I make you a bag out of artist canvas um, and you use it to paint on and that's exactly what she did um, so I made her a simple a very simple messenger bag um, from artist canvas I didn't put any interfacing didn't put any stabilizer all it had was a magnetic clasp. It was very, very simple. Um, I will have a look and see if I can find some pictures or she might have some pictures. I know the bag went to her friend um, and see if I can put them on in the comments so you can kind of see where this all came from. Um, she was using fabric paints because that's what um, she was doing at school and that's what they had. But it set me thinking, there's no reason why we can't paint on other things other than artist canvas. Um, and that's where these, this sort of thing came from. I've always, I've always liked to decorate stuff. Um, initially, craft text was something that when craft text first became a thing, and there is a group called Craft Text Junkies. If you're interested in using Craft Text or, or don't know what it is, go and find the group. Um, and have a, if you search my name, you'll see that when the, when Craft Text first came out, and it's not been around for that long, um, and for those of you that are thinking, what the hell's Craft Text? It's, a, um, it's almost a card-like substance. It looks, um, the, the Levi's badges on the back of your jeans that, that have Levi Strauss written on them. And it looks a bit like leather once it's been washed several times. It's actually made of craft text. It's a, a craft card um, made by, can't remember who it's made by, um, available in WH Smith's, Amazon, all of those sort of big online shopping places. Um, and it, it, when it first came out, it was like you either had white, grey, beige, brown or black. And those were the colours. And it, it was interesting because you could sew it. You could um, paint on it. You could stain it. You could wash it um, and crumple it up. And the more you did to it, the more texture it seemed to take on. And once it's washed, it takes on a much more leathery look. And this, the group Craft Text Junkies came about and people joined because a lot of us bag makers are like, you know, like, oh, it's a new thing. Oh, let's have a go and see what we can do with it. And there was a lot of experimenting went on. Um, I did a lot of experimenting. I used um, henna. Um, I stained it with tea bags. I, I did all sorts of different things to see what sort of effects I could get. Um, and I've used Sharpie pens and I've painted um and it's it's just interesting stuff um but once you start messing with the what something actually looks like and trying to create something completely unique you suddenly start thinking what else can i mess with and make something completely unique um and that's where this has all kind of come from i love the panels that you can buy you know, there's lots of them with these sort of cutesy animals and 
not so keen on the cutesy animals I have to say but um, and a lot of the skull designs which I know are really popular again not something that floats my boat particularly but it's it's very popular and I know a lot of people use them um, and there's lots of people now doing custom panels in certainly as well in, in the UK at one time you, you could only buy them if you went to America or if you were sort of ordering from America but um, now you can get them in the UK and spoon flower and there's quite a lot of different places that you can buy custom fabrics and custom uh, vinyl panels um, my problem is that because they are now so readily available in the UK everybody's got them so your bag's never ever going to be completely unique because you might have this cute little kangaroo or panda or a cat or whatever on the front of your bag but so is the next person that bought the same panel so um i, f I find that for me unique is what makes handcrafted bags special um and they're not if you've got the same panel as as 30 other people um but if you've painted something yourself nobody else is going to have one and for those that have said oh you could sell those yeah i probably could but you can see here how long this is taking and this is a tiny little bit of painting that's Ten centimeters by ten centimeters, maybe. Um, and you can buy a panel for, I don't know, four or five pounds of that size. So nobody's going to pay what this sort of hand painting, completely unique art type work is worth really because why would you but i would definitely encourage anybody that has a slightly artistic streak to have a go because it's not as difficult as you think um and Gallus paints are not the cheapest but you don't need every color you can just buy the basic colors um, and if all else fails, paint your trainers. That's what I would have done with this if I hadn't have, that's what I bought it for initially, but um, you can use it to paint anything. Um, many, many, many moons ago when I was just a young thing, and I'm not a young thing anymore, um, I had a pair of Dr. Martins that I painted, like a lot of us did. And I painted them with ordinary acrylic paints because I didn't know any better. Um, and when they cracked and chipped, which they did, I just painted over. Um, I wish I'd known about leather paints then. I don't know if leather paints were even a thing then, to be honest. Um, but there's, you have to have some sort of artistic streak, unless you're gonna be able to find something that you can either draw round or use a stencil or copy from somewhere because or, or you're just gonna use it as a color wash and ombre it which is easy enough to do without actually having much artistic ability per se people always assume that when i say artistic or when anybody says artistic that means you have to be able to draw a picture that's recognizable um and actually that's not the case um, most of the designs that I do, and I have done some that are recognisable. I mean, I've copied, I copied the, the Van Gogh Starry Starry Night um, artwork, which was easily recognisable as, as a copy. It was not an old master Van Gogh. I did not buy any artwork to chop up and put on the front of my bag. Um, but you don't actually have to be able to paint a, a recognizable picture you can just cut, do designs that suit you whatever stripes you could mark out stripes with uh, masking tape there we go that's very rough i haven't kind of gone 
I would have taken a little bit more care, but I wanted to kind of show you. Let's put the lid on there. Because again, I would like you to just, just as likely to knock it down. Now, if you're using, the one thing I will say is if you're using, uh, let's try and show you because it's easier to show you than it is to explain it. If you're using a dark colored vinyl to paint on, the colors look quite bright. but they're not as vivid as they are on a light color. So what you can do, is use white. And what that will do is make this a bolder color. Um, so let's just, Let's just show you right next to that bit that I've already done. So all you're effectively doing is making a lighter background for your paint so that the white actually shines through. It's about the way the eye um, we see things because light's reflected. It's about reflect, reflected light. If you want to know a biology lesson about how your eye works, um, then go to Google because Google will help you with that. Now, that's not dry, but I'm going to put the green over the top of the white. Now, I would normally wait until the white was dry. Um, but I'm not going to because you don't need to sit and watch paint dry. It's Sunday, it's a glorious day. You don't need to sit and watch it. But I think, I hope you can see. But adding the white makes the color so much bolder. Now the front of the Piper bag that I made, I did in white first. Um, so I could get, because that's on black and I wanted the colours to be really vibrant. Um, they look pretty good, just done on the, this is navy, a very dark navy blue, just done on the navy blue. But when you do them on the white, you can see that that's, that's the same green as I've used here and here. And it's so much brighter on top of the white because the background colour is um, shining through. Um, they're not fully... Um, they don't, it's not full coverage. Um, you still get a little bit of the colour that's below coming through. So adding white behind, if you're using it on a dark colour, will give you a bolder finished colour. It does mean you've got two layers of paint. It does mean that you're going to have twice the time um, because you ideally you should leave the white to dry. I didn't I don't didn't there because say you don't need to watch paint dry. That's not interesting. Um, but that is basically painting on acrylic uh, a painting on um, vinyl now let me just I don't know if this is dry I don't know if you can see but there's still some silver showing around the outside there and I'm going to just gently rub around it's not quite dry rub around the outside and that will take that silver off and it, you won't be able to see it it's just a and i am spitting i'm literally using a little bit of saliva just on a gently and you could do that with a cotton wool bud which would be my best suggestion rather than a grubby tea towel but that takes the silver off and what you're left with is just your your paintwork and I mean I've just done a simple little ball type thing there you could do whatever you wanted you could be as creative as you want you could put flowers you could put birds you could put skulls whatever is your fancy then you could do it um, these do water down you can water them down so you get a much much more um, transparent translucent look Let's just so.
So if I water it down, you can kind of see the the vinyl through. So you could actually kind of do almost like a, a wash over the top of, you do need to have some paint in it though, otherwise it's just water, um, over the top of your already painted design. It's kind of, <laughs> never tried that before. Um, But you can see how you can be just you can just go on and on and on and it would go on and on and on because there's just no end to what you can do it's your imagination it's what limits you and your your own personal bravery level because we're not all as brave as each other so for those of you that paint already and i know there's a few of you that do I smudged it because that wasn't dry. Um, give it a try. What's to lose? You know, if you buy, even if you were to buy half a dozen of these, they'd probably cost you about £25 and a paintbrush. Um, try it. I do have some other um, paints, and these are slightly cheaper than the Angelus ones. Um, and these are made by Small Tongue. Um, you get a whole box, a selection of colours, and the colours in here are slightly different. Um, you also get your, that's a, that says beige, but it's actually a bit more of a bronzy colour. Um, and you get a thing of deglazer in this box. Um, this came from Amazon, and I've got, that's also got a, a bottle of finisher in there um so i don't use finisher on on vinyl you could do if you wanted to um so i've got what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve colors plus the yeah twelve colors plus the the deglazer and the finisher but these are small tongue acrylic leather paints 14 colors it says um let's say there's there's actually 12 colors plus um the deglazer and the finisher um these can be also used in airbrushes if you've got an airbrush um i don't have one um i have used an airbrush before um when i was teaching we had an airbrush in in class and i used the airbrush then um <laughs> it's not my finest skill so it's not something i've continued to use because it's an entirely different skill level um and it just i just couldn't get the hang of it so but if you've got an airbrush and or you know somebody that's got one there again give it a ping you could get some great kind of ombre effects with with an airbrush and a slightly more kind of almost like graffiti look uh, like a spray can look there you go um the other option is for using um, Sharpie pens and acetone. Now, I already have um, a, a design and a pattern, not a pattern, it's a, a, a tutorial, should we call it, um, for using Sharpie pens and an airbrush, which is actually in my business group, but I will add it here um, into uh, our group. Um, but that's basically, that's painting on vinyl. I can't teach you how to create a design. I can't teach you how to paint a flower or how to paint a skull or how to paint a whatever. I probably could actually, but it would take me ages. And if everybody wanted something different, I'd never actually have any time for doing anything else. Um, if, you're, if you're a new person who doesn't really know much about art, I would suggest going down to the range or the works or one of those places and buying one of these books that shows you how to draw. Um, most drawings, most drawings can be created with circles and ovals to start with. So you can just draw in your circles and ovals and then split them up to make I don't know, a face or whatever. Um, I mean, even, I don't know what I did with it. Where's the pen gone? If I show you what I mean by that. Um, let's talk about the easiest thing, a face. So we talk about a face and people talk about 
I can't draw anything. But a face is effectively an oval and you would go across the centre of that oval and that's where the, your eyes would be. You would then go halfway between that line and the bottom line and that's where your nose would be. You would then go halfway between that line and the bottom line and that's where your chin would be and uh, your mouth would be and then you add hair. Most things are similar proportions, uh, have particular proportions that are, you can affix to them to get the proportions right. Now, I don't know if you can even see that, but the that's a terrible drawing. It's taken me two seconds, but the eyes are halfway down that oval. The nose is halfway again between and the mouth is halfway again between and the chin. You can alter the shape of the face to make a pointy chin or whatever and then there's the hair that kind of goes over the top and the proportions are that of a human being. If you're going to do a dog or a skull or a whatever there are certain proportions that you can use to draw each of those things and a basic even a children's art book how to draw um, will give you those proportions and show you what um, what sort of ovals and circles and what have you you need to draw whatever it is you want to draw. I could give you lessons online, but that's not what I do. Um, I spent a long time teaching teaching art and teaching people to draw circles and ovals. Um, now it's more about the colours and the designs for me. But it's, please don't think you can't do it because you can't draw, because you can, you absolutely can. Um, go and grab yourself a book, say from the range or from the works or one of those places, you can get those sort of books to a penny. Go on eBay. Um, Amazon, don't spend a lot of money, you don't need to, you know, four or five quid will get you a decent book that will show you how to base, draw basic shapes, how to draw basic things, so like faces or, or flowers or dogs, cats, horses, blah, 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 so on and so forth, that will teach you about perspective, so if you want to draw something like a um, a landscape, which I've done, I mean, we the Monet uh, bag that I uh, um, did and what have you it's about perspective it's about having things in the foreground and in the distance and understanding the way the light shines on things if you want to draw a picture that's an actual picture of something most of the things that I've done on vinyl or, or um, craft text have been fairly abstract um, often quite uh, just shapes and colors and stripes and and optical illusions and stuff like that because that's what I like to draw that's what I like um doing I would never draw a bag with a portrait of somebody I can draw a portrait I've done portraits of lots of people but I would never draw a bag do a bag with a portrait on it because that's just too much like hard work um but you know go for it give it a ping don't don't be afraid <laughs>